Welcome to America and Arizona Government for Elementary Teachers. This is Presentation 14, Arizona Local Government and Direct Democracy. While most of this course focuses on the federal government and state government, most of the actual services provided by the government are provided by local governments. Local governments like counties and cities have ha specific political dynamics that governments of on a larger scale have. They, they're similar to that, but they do not have the publicity or notoriety that the higher levels do. Politicians who work at the local level are often citizen politicians who volunteer or work for little pay for the betterment of the communities they live in. Of course, there's also professional politicians and staffers whose career is managing the cities and county governments that provide the services essential to maintain the community. In this presentation, we'll look at some of the organizational structures of local government and some of political dynamics of these governments that are specific to this level. This presentation will also look at the direct democracy mechanisms that exist in Arizona that are not necessarily unique to Arizona, but Arizona is a leader in. This presentation will examine AEPA Objective 16, Understand State and Local Government in the United States, and 19, Understand State Government and Government of American Indian Nations in Arizona. We'll also look at some of the objectives under Concept 2, Structure of Government, contained within the Arizona Social Studies Standard Strand 3, Civics and Government. You're encouraged to look at the document on the Social Studies Standard articulated by grade level and look at some of the objectives listed under Concept 2 to ensure that you understand and are able to competently teach those principles and objectives to your future students. Arizona is divided into 15 counties. Maricopa is the largest county in population with over half of the state's residents residing in its borders. County government is an important part of Arizona's political system. It's a level of government that is obviously in between the state executive on the one side and the local cities on the other. As an in-between entity, it performs functions that are similar to both and yet unique. Uh, counties in Arizona are responsible for operating the jails, prosecuting state crimes, administering social programs, operating the state superior courts and the justice of the peace courts, uh, operating the county hospitals, maintaining elections and election records, maintaining records of deeds and mortgages. Well, these are all functions that the state government might provide in other places, but in Arizona, these functions are left to the county governments. Now, there are also still parts of the state that are very sparsely populated and where residents have not been incorporated into a municipality. Now, in these areas, the county government provides direct services that a city government normally would, such as law enforcement, fire protection, utilities, uh, enforcing zoning, regulating traffic. So, in many regards, the counties in Arizona perform both statewide functions and localized functions. Now, similar to the state executive branch, the counties operate under a system of plural executive power, meaning there are multiple entities that are independently elected, and so they can operate uh, independent of each other and often at cross purposes. The counties are administered by a board of supervisors who are elected officials. 
The board appoints the county staff, such as clerks, public defenders, park administrators. The board also determines the budget for the county offices, including the offices that are run by officials who are elected separately. Now, this frequently causes tension between the board and those officials. Now, just like with the state government, the primary executive officials at the county level are independently elected so that each has an independent power base and they're not obligated to follow the direction of the board. The county officials who are elected include the county sheriff, the county attorney, the county assessor, the recorder, the treasurer, the superintendent of schools, and the clerk of the superior court. With this many officials standing for election, but not controlling their own budget, it's no wonder that counties in Arizona are frequently filled with political intrigue. One of the more high profile county positions is the county sheriff. The sheriff is responsible for the enforcement of state law, the holding of prisoners who are awaiting trial in the county and state courts, and providing local law enforcement in the unincorporated areas that the county has responsible for. Each county has its own sheriff and most of them uh, do their job with little fanfare. In the largest county, however, Sheriff Joe Arpaio has come to embody the position of county sheriff. With his populist message of immigration sweeps, the inmates wearing pink underwear and eating bologna sandwiches, and his self-promotion as America's toughest sheriff, Arpaio has built a power base that enables him to operate outside of the county system and even at odds with the direction of the Board of Supervisor. Now, in spite of those conflicts or perhaps because of those controversial con tactics, he has proven widely popular, easily winning re-election multiple times. The county attorney is responsible for trying cases in the superior court, that the courts that reside in that county. That means the county attorney is the enforcer of state law that most defendants face in Arizona. The county attorney also represents the board of supervisors in whatever legal dispute they may become involved in. Recently, the potential conflict that is always present between the county elected officials erupted into reality in Maricopa. For many years, the county sheriff, Arpaio, tangled with the county attorney, Romley, over several issues, including immigration policy and allegations of abuse in the county jail. These two had a high-profile legal dispute involving multiple lawsuits and counter lawsuits that ran for years and cost millions of dollars. Now, since both sides were county employees, the taxpayers picked up the tab for this dispute. Now, this dispute only ended with the end of Romley's term in office. The new county attorney, Andrew Thomas, became an ally, an ally of Arpaio. Arpaio then had a long-running dispute with the County Board of Supervisors involving allegations of fraud and corruption against the supervisors and allegations of wasteful spending and threats to reduce the sheriff's budget on the part of the supervisors. In this dispute, the county attorney took the sides of the sheriff and indicted almost the entire Board of Supervisors. The sheriff's office arrested the board members and seized the board's computers and interrogated county staff at their private residences. Now, these cases were all thrown out of court for uh, lack of evidence, at which point the sheriff and the county attorney began an investigation into the judges who made those rulings against them in a, an attempt to prove that they also were part of a grand conspiracy. As with the earlier dispute, uh, 
this, these disputes between members of the executive branch at the county level cost millions of dollars, which was again paid by taxpayers because all sides in the dispute are working for the county. All of this infighting seems endemic to Maricopa and it may be criticized by other counties in the state, but the very structure of the plural executive system makes all counties potential battlegrounds between the various elected members. This seems to be the way Arizonans like it though, as voters recently rejected a ballot proposition which would have placed all of the county executives under the control of the county board of supervisors. This would make the executive members appointed officials rather than elected officials. That move was rejected by Arizona voters. So uh, Arizona voters uh, enjoy the political drama that takes place at their county levels. The next level of local government are the cities and towns, the municipalities. With little fanfare, these are the governments that provide most of the governmental goods and services that people enjoy and think of as the government. City officials provide police and fire protection. They maintain transportation in infrastructure. They provide transit in the larger cities and they enforce local laws and zoning and in general provide other goods and services that affect the quality of life in a given municipality. The forms of city government vary. Some are run by mayors and city councils pass the rules and ordinances and the mayor functions as a chief executive, while others use a city manager model. That the mayor model is the dominant model through much of the country, but there are only a few cities in Arizona that use this model. Most Arizona cities use the city manager model. In the city manager model system, the mayor is on the city council and gets a vote on the rules and ordinances like any other member of the city council does but has no additional authority beyond what any other city, uh, city council person would have. The mayor in these towns functions more as a head of state. He, is, he or she is the public face of the city and advocates for the city to attract business, attract tourists, give speeches at public events. But the day-to-day -day running of the city the chief executive functions is taken by a city manager. The city manager is not an elected official, but rather is an employee who is hired by the city council to run the city. This person attends the council meetings and gives presentations on the budget or any city issues that need to come to the council's attention. Unlike the mayor, most people are unaware of who the city manager is, but it is the city manager who does the day-to-day -day governing of the city. The city is run much more on a business model in this way, and it separates the day-to-day -day operations of the city from the politics that may occur on the city council. So. Most Arizona cities have opted for the city manager model as opposed to a mayoral model where the mayor functions as the chief executive. The Arizona Constitution grants cities a great degree of autonomy from the state legislature. However, the legislature does pass laws that affect the cities. If you remember the hierarchy of laws that is set forth in the Arizona Constitution, says that state statutes do indeed trump municipal ordinances and agency regulations. So when there's a conflict, it is the state legislature's will that wins. Um, in addition to that, the legislature can access funds that the cities have set aside, as it did in 2010 to help balance 
the state budget. The legislature can also pass laws that function like an unfunded mandate, requiring cities to do things but not appropriating money to the cities to do them with. Also, cities can reach such a financial or legal difficulties that politicians in the state capital have lost confidence in the ability of the people of that city to govern themselves. So it is possible for the legislature to revoke a city's charter, though this rarely, if ever, occurs. The next form of governing body within the state are districts. Now, districts have the power to set taxes and policies specific to the domain for which they were created. Uh, some examples would be the community college districts that operate in most of the counties in the state. There are health districts that are set up to administer hospitals and school districts that run the local K-12 school systems. There are stadium districts and uh, library districts. Um, all of these districts have taxing authority so they can establish uh, a tax base to pay for whatever policy they're in charge of and they can also regulate uh, how that money is spent and whatever entity the district is over, be it a hospital or a community college or a school. So these districts are created and governed by laws set forth by the legislature and the districts are administered and run by boards who tend also to be elected officials. Now, like cities, districts can get in such financial trouble or political trouble that the legislature and state agencies feel the need to intervene and remove the self-governing authority of that district. An example of this would be in the 2000s, the state felt that the school districts in Colorado City were not being administered properly. Uh, this was part of the polygamy trials that were ongoing, but in this uh, city of Colorado City, the local school board and school district was allocating the money to buy uh, jets and other uh, large ticket items that were used by a local church leader and then not paying the salaries of the teachers who worked there. And so in the face of that sort of blatant misappropriation of funds, the state intervened and removed the officials that were in charge of that school district and the state Department of Education directly administered that school district for a while to bring those expenses back into order and to reestablish uh, proper governing principles in that district. So these uh, district bodies throughout the state operate with a large degree of autonomy and you can't underestimate the power that they have to raise taxes within their district. But at the same time, they are held accountable by the state executive branch and the legislature. The last form of local government to discuss is embodied by the 21 tribal governments that operate in the state as part of the treaties that created these reservations. These communities have a large degree of autonomy from the state government. They are essentially sovereign nations within the state boundaries. These tribal governments have a complex relationship with the state government. Uh, most state law does not apply on tribal territory. The tribal governments are, however, subject to all federal law, and their residents are U.S. citizens. But 
most of the regulations and functions that would be provided by a state or local entity throughout the rest of the state are provided by the tribe on these reservations and the tribal council governs these areas as an independent and autonomous local government.